women are nerds. Very few. I may be less than 1% in the world. <laughs> I think my mum would say I'm distractible and never can stick to one thing for too long. But it's it's not that. It's it's been one thing has evolved into another, into another. For me, actually, where Electric Couture started was point of frustration while I was working in a tech environment surrounded by boys and there was a uniform and the uniform was jeans and t-shirts. I never wear jeans and t-shirts. But I'm a nerd, I love technology. And that was the point where I got really, really frustrated. Like, why can't I look smart and pretty at the same time? When I was uh, a kid, I saw like satellites just crossing in the night sky. And I thought, what, what are those things? You know, and people told me like, those are actually machines. I thought like, when I grew up, I want to understand those things. I have this weird creative technologist blend. <laughs> but my idea is to be able to introduce people to a world of technology that they might not have experienced before. I mean, I would tell any woman of color, just put your hands on something that is in technology. I'm telling my grandkids, you can do anything you want, so be creative and do something that you enjoy. Grandma's doing something that she enjoyed in her life. We are like in a world where you can communicate and exchange information really quickly. So for me, that means everybody has a chance. I don't have to be trained in that way. I don't have to go into this university. There are no boundaries, there are no frontiers. All those things are in, in our hands. That one thing that I really wanted to do is now I'm doing it at the age of 54. So I'm not regretting it one bit. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Singapore Constellation. Almost forgot where I was for a second. Hi, I am Daniel. I'm the Director of Solutions Engineering for APAC for GitHub. I'm based in a tiny little town about 100 kilometres west of Sydney, and I really want to welcome you all here tonight. Um, just a quick question. Did anyone actually watch that video just then? Cool. Yeah, awesome. So, what was, I've got a question to ask. What was the common thing amongst all those people before they said they were a de the, I am a developer? What's the common thing amongst them all? No idea? Okay, cool. Because I had a t-shirt for someone, but obviously you're going to miss out now. The thing is that they came from all kinds of walks of life. These people weren't coders to begin with, right? They were you know, fashion designers, they were drone engineers, they were, I can't remember all of them now off the top of my head despite the fact that I was, oh, grandmother, right? And all of a sudden at some stage they made a, a decision, they made, it came to a realisation, hello everyone over here, hi, they came to a realisation that, you know what, they wanted to code because coding was the thing that actually, you know, helped them do everything else they wanted to do. And, and those kinds of things are basically moments. We have all of those moments in our life where we realise, you know what, even though we do a particular thing really well, how do we drive it further? And all these people decided to be coders, they decided to be developers. So hands up everyone here who's a developer. Awesome. Hands up everyone here who uh, had an open source, has worked on an open source project, like they've contributed to an open source project and had a PR kind of accepted. Pretty cool, huh? It's the best part about being a developer. Anyone here who's never actually contributed to an open source project, but wants to? So what are you waiting for? All right, come in, have that moment be part of the whole thing. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming along. We've got a great night in store for you tonight. There's plenty of drinks, plenty of food. Please get involved. Again, our friends down here who are sitting on the corner, they may not see all the slides, but we'll try and talk to you whenever we can. And uh, just thank you so much for being here. A little bit of housekeeping, oops, a little bit of housekeeping before we get going. Um, can we just confirm that the ladies' restrooms are now working? Is that correct? Awesome. So the restrooms are just down here in the back to my left over here. Uh, here there's the details for the Wi-Fi. We really love you to actually hop onto social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want to hop onto, and you now talk about what you see here tonight. Um, it's not about us. This night is all about you, right? This is a community event tonight. We've got some great speakers involved. And let's get looking at what's going to happen there. So 
Um, oh, last thing I got told is that the bar closes at 10 o'clock, right? So last drinks is just going to be a little bit before 10. So um, we've got some lightning talks coming in from our community members uh, with the final talk kicking in around 9, 10. And then we're going to do a bunch of networking after that. So like I said, this is about you guys talking to each other. So if you haven't, if there's somebody here sitting next to you that you haven't met, turn around and say hi. Find out what they're doing. See if you can become part of it. Um, so what I want to talk about now is this little sentence here. Um, you may have heard of a little event that we have in October in San Francisco called Universe. Has anyone have actually been to our Universe conference? See, it's really hard to get here from the, to get there from this part of the world. So what we want to do is we actually want to start coming out more to where you are. So we've done a couple of these now in Australia. We just did one in Auckland last week, and now we're doing one here in Singapore. We are going to be back. We are going to do a lot more as we start to build our team out here in this region. Can everyone who's a GitHub employee just pop your hands up right now? All right, all these people work in this region to work for you guys. I want you to go and say hello to them at some stage tonight. In fact, we've got a little game we're going to play. I've got 10 vouchers for T-shirts. All right, and what I'm going to do is, you need to go up and say hi to one of those people, and Sam and Fatten, can you just pop your hands up for a second? So the three of us used to work in a different company before we joined GitHub. You need to walk up to somebody from GitHub and ask them what company that was. The first 10 people at the end of the night that comes to me and tell me what that company is will receive a T-shirt voucher, right? So you hop on the store, pick your own design, pick your own size, we'll ship it to you no matter where you are. There are two people in the audience who are disqualified from that, and that's Zach and Jack, and they know who they are, and they know why they're disqualified from that particular thing. All right, so why are we in Singapore? So there are 49,035 users of GitHub, and that's freaking awesome, so congratulations, guys. Now, normally when we're doing this, we kind of look at the cities, and we break it down by the city, and we say, OK, Auckland, you had 54%, and Wellington has 46%, so we hold this in Auckland. But it's really difficult because Everybody in Singapore is in Singapore. So you've got 100% of the market in Singapore, that's fantastic. And that's why we're here tonight. A couple of things. I um, hope you're enjoying the drinks and the food. And we've got some great speakers for you. But for the next 10 minutes or so, I've got to do the sales pitch, all right? So just hang with me for a sec. We're going to talk about a couple of things. It's more about what's new in GitHub so that you understand the stuff that's there that you can access and you can use right now, all right? So has anyone heard of GitHub? Everyone's heard of GitHub? Does everyone use it? Keep your hand up if you use it. Does anyone pay for it? People paying for it? OK, slightly less paying for it. That's OK. Does anyone here use a product called GitLab or Bitbucket? All right. You use GitLab and Bitbucket. Oh. You're a speaker, I can't even talk to you. You use, GitLab or Bit, you use GitLab or Bitbucket, and you're standing right here in the front row. That's pretty brave. Anyone else use GitLab or Bitbucket? All right, gentlemen there. Do you use it for work? Do you use it for work, GitLab or Bitbucket? Do you use it for work? Yes? No? Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. If I gave you a T-shirt, would you wear it to work? <laughs> All right, give that guy, can someone hand that guy a T-shirt? All right. So I've got nine of these now to give away at the end of the night. All right, so what's new in GitHub? Let's talk about a couple of things that we announced at our Universe session last year, just to give you an idea of what we're bringing into the product. Actually, we've got a fantastic presentation tomorrow about what we're looking at bringing in, what we're thinking about for the future, but tonight's about what's there now, so you can start using it today. So I spoke about earlier, I asked you, who's actually not contributed to an open source project, but they want to? Does anyone still want to do that? Often a lot of the reasons why you don't know where to start, where you want to begin. So what we've done is we've kind of made it a lot easier for you to find projects that you might be interested in. You might be interested in a particular platform like Node. You might be interested in a particular language like uh, Ruby. But you could be interested in, for example, um, I can't point at the screen. There's no screen behind me. But you might be interested in something like Made in Africa or open journalism or government data. It may be features or maybe uh, topics like that that make you way more interested. So we started to put together things like curated lists. So if there's something that you're specifically interested in being part of, right, we can now find it for you and help you get involved. Like I said, there are topics like Node, JS, and Rails. And it's because we're starting to take advantage of things like big data. All right? And we're going to talk about that a little more tomorrow. But the thing to understand is that 
we now have about 500 terabytes of data. Right? And we want to start taking advantage of that to allow you to write better code. So some of the things we brought in, for example, are things like um, topics. So you can add topics to your repository so that people can easily discover your code. So they can start using your code in the project, but they may want to contribute to your code as well. Um, things like we, we start looking at the kinds of projects that you follow or you get involved in, and we start recommending other projects that you might want to be interested in. Right, so the more that you star, the more people that you follow, the more we can actually uh, automatically configure this to meet your needs. Again, we're using a hell of a lot of data at the moment to go through that process to determine it for you. Um, we're starting to report to you things like, well, OK, here are all the open source projects that your project relies on. But what's more important probably for you is who's actually using your projects in their particular repositories. And as we kind of grow in that area, we're going to do a lot more. So recently, we released the idea of the fact that we can now go and have a look at your project. We can look at all the projects that, we that you're using, look them up in national security databases, and actually tell you what packages have security vulnerabilities that you're using right now. Not only just tell you what that is, but we can actually open a pull request, write the package files, and then submit that pull request. So all you've got to do is approve it, merge it, and your application is up to date and more secure. The other thing we had from our open source community members is that they wanted to have a chance to have a chat about, you know, they might have wanted to discuss specific topics, but not necessarily within an issue or within a pull request. So we now have got the idea of team discussions happening in place so that open source repository maintainers can now have a secure, simple area where they can actually have discussions around the projects that are going on that they are looking after. So. Let's start talking about, that's it. So like I said, it was a quick one. We're all good to go. So let's now start bringing our um, speakers on stage. So we've got several tonight, like Michelle, Hu Jing, we have Ken So, we have Alyssa Ong from Microsoft, and we even have Sao Xiong from Singapore Power Group. And they've got an amazing range of presentations for you tonight. All right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to start off first with Michelle. Michelle's known as the Hackathon Queen back at home in Australia. She's at the forefront of Melbourne's startup science and tech scenes, helping to drive the city's entrepreneurial culture. Not only has she founded a couple of companies, she's heavily involved in the startup ecosystem, from running hackathons to emceeing, speaking, esports, and facilitating a range of events. She's currently started a new venture, working with corporates on their innovation strategies, running hack days and design workshops. And she wants to talk to you tonight about the fact that tech doesn't necessarily equal software. Can you please join me in welcoming Michelle up on stage? 